Now, please join me in welcoming Tim Tate and Joy Scott. Wilfred, they are all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you tonight. It's wonderful to have you both here tonight. So I said I will be very short, so I will be, so you have the floor just for you. I just wanted to give you a little uh, you know, summary of the exhibition and the concept behind the exhibition. So our uh, goal for this exhibition was to focus on a lesser known aspect of Marjorie Post as a collector and her interest for glass. And it turns out that we have about 1,600 pieces of glass in the exhibition, even though they are not all on view. Uh, for those of you who have seen the exhibition, it's still uh, record breaking for us to have so many pieces of glass on view in one uh, space. So we have over 300 of, uh, pieces of glass in the uh, exhibition. And of course, the exhibition reflects Marjorie Post's general interest for European decorative arts and American decorative arts from the 1600s to the 1900s. But as you all know, glass has been highly mastered for centuries all over the world by wonderful artists and designers, and we wanted to put our collection in a broader context. Context. So we borrowed a few pieces from ancient glass, but also we were very fortunate to be able to work with contemporary artists uh, and who agreed to lend us uh, display their art in this exhibition. And we have two pieces in the show, one by Tim Tate and one by George Scott, and they will talk uh, to us about them uh, today. So we have a few slides of the pieces in the show. And so if you would like to, oh, there we go. Here we go. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> so Tim, can you tell us a little bit more my, about this piece, which is an introduction of the exhibition? My play is this, I think it was the only one that was created for the exhibit. Yeah. So they approached me on doing a piece here and I thought long and hard about what it should be. They came up with a piece that I'd done older and wondered about it. And I said, right, I have to make sure that it's in the form that honors this rich history of decorative arts in this in this town. Plus, I wanted some of my own kind of queer aesthetic. In it. So in that queer aesthetic, you see this is the first time two men were ever recorded dancing together. It's from the archives at the Library of Congress. That is 1896, and that is Thomas Edison's studio. And he was testing to see if um, sound and and movement would match up. So you see someone playing the violin, and then the two men are dancing. And he, at that time, no one knew if film and music, or you know, sound, would match up on a film. So this was the first test for that. And these men danced for three minutes, and they could never realize that a century later. You know, they are almost forgotten, although we all know who every single person in Edison Studio is. But that here, those three minutes was one of the more prominent ones to a group of people they couldn't even realize would exist in 100 years. That's what I put in. But I wanted, well, I'm, I'm queer. I wanted a little romance. I mean, don't <laughs> just dance me in there. Give me some flowers first. So I thought I'd go. This yes. is where you yes. say Q&A &E at the end. Yes. Oh. Q&A will be at the end. Oh, sorry. sorry about that. Yes. Write that down, girl. Yes. All right. One. Sure. <laughs> Here we go. Next. All right. So that's a wonderful piece. We are very glad to have it uh, in the exhibition. And here is made for it. Made for it. Yes. And here is Joyce, a piece uh, which we see in the exhibition, which is in dialogue in the exhibition with some of our pieces. We like to create dialogue between, you know, the contemporary pieces we have in our historic creation. And we have a few pieces, you know, that did work uh, near um, the wonderful piece. And so, Joyce, can you tell us more about this wonderful uh, work for him? Well, I was telling a story at your table today. I was asked to come to RISD to teach a beadwork. And I said, well, how much are you going to pay me? And they told me, and I laughed at them. And I said, what can you do for me? This is what I think we can do. If you give me one day in the glass studio, I'll be with the students working. They'll blow for me. And you pay the shipment for the glass home. Then I'll do it. I have worked a lot in glass my entire life, starting in the 70s. But it was like commercial glass, like mayonnaise jars. Um, my first time at um, 
Haystack Mountain School of Pastors since 74. By the time years later that I was teaching there, I'd been to Penland and Tochuck and other places, just hanging out in the glass studio and working with a lot of famous glass people. This was done at RISD. Uh, when I went in, they weren't with yet working with yellow glass. I mean, what do you mean? Because people generally do what their teachers do, and their teachers usually do with someone else. As someone who's not a glass blower, then they had the opportunity to work with someone and collaboratively work on color and design. Dante Marioni, of course, is a famous glass blower, and he does this slicing and placing things together like a, like a, you know, a, just a board or a tile work. Well, I did that, and I also painted on them. You pick them up, and that's where you get that grid work from. Glass beads sometimes can be fused in this. And I think at another angle, there might be a, there is a blue figure on the side where I took a chance and I fused glass that was maybe compatible with this glass, a glass beaded figure onto the surface, and then I did beadwork. I won't take a long time, so what I have to say is I shall not be denied. I believe that if I can think it, I ought to be able to do it. Not always with a plum. Uh, and As a person who was running the shop when she was down there, if I dared say, that's not going to fit with my glass. Oh, my God. I knew that's what I was going to work with for the day. next three weeks. That's oh, my God. So I learned to shut my mouth is what I learned. Yeah. That's not true. We both yelled at each other. Oh. <laughs> but, but my point is to believe that craft work is not the same as fine art when all art has craftsmanship or handwork in it. And to believe that I can only view or create work that has one discipline or one way of thinking, then I say, you are not the boss of me. Step back it was exactly and watch. Right. Thank you so much. I made I, him step back a couple of times. He's uh, just a big guy. <laughs> you would know an ingenue yourself, girl. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> did he just call me a French frog no. or something? No, I did not. So I can only imagine how it was when you both worked together oh. because it was it's so wonderful that we have those two wonderful artworks by you two in the exhibition. But at the same time, you were like accomplishing like the work together. And so we have a few slides about this wonderful glass wall. And I will give you the, the, the clicker which is working now, yeah. and you can tell us more about this wonderful work that you have done together. This was the one of the very first ones where I said, that, that glass, that red glass, those beads are not going to be compatible with my glass. That's where I first learned, don't say those words. But indeed, they are totally compatible with that glass. So she shut me down fast, you know, that's her way. Wait, let me in inject this. Yeah. And the pieces that were not compatible, compatible, they were compatible, meaning they did not fuse properly and they cracked the glass, whatever. We could use them in another way. Right. Okay. True. It's true. All right. Oops. Oops. Wrong one. Backward. Yep. Yep. This is the entire piece. It is uh, nine feet long by six feet high. Starts about two feet off the ground, so it's that thing. About eight feet high, goes ten across. Uh, when I first went to Joyce, I felt like I had strayed because I was in a kind of commercial all glass gallery, and I wanted to kind of stray back into the fine art world. And I brought her Thai food. I knew how to get to her, and so I, <laughs> I went. I said, "What do you think?" And she goes, "I love the idea, but we have to ask my gallery." So we drove to her gallery where she had a photo shoot, and there's an African American woman on both sides. Sort of recognize, but I don't know who they are. No, they have pictures, and all of a sudden, one on the other side says, "Oh my God, you're Tim Tate." And I'm thinking, "I owe her money." You're, that's right, it's something. And that was Lowry Sims, who's massively. She's my very first curator at the Museum of Art and Design. I can't believe I didn't recognize her. I wasn't even thinking, but there she was. And on the other side was um, Leslie. Leslie Hammond. So it was an amazing moment that we had. So I just wanted to tell them that story. All right, here we go. Uh, so each of these is a story, is a, a chapter of a book. So there's about 50 chapters in this book. Each one tells a different story as you go through. Maybe at some point we'll do a book on it. Who knows? But in the meantime, every one of those stories were things that happened as we were doing them, the things that was happening in the world or were just happening in our lives or in our heads. So we called it now, I think. Is that what mm -hmm. we want? It's just called now. 
So every time Joyce came down, this was a period of about six months, if something was happening then, it was in our, fresh in our minds. So we would make work at that point for that woman. Then, right. And some of the majority of pieces are collaborative. Yes. But some of them are just me or her. Right. Or single. It's about a third mine, a third hers, and a third both. Well, for me, it's like, oh, I don't want you to do it that way. So the the piece that is the black piece was we painted it black, and then I was going to glue something down, and I just took a Dremel tool and did some scraffito onto it. And that ghostly kind of image just came from me scratching back into the paint. And mariposas or... <laughs> so he's like, you know, I like, I want to do... I think we decided on a butterfly, which is, you know, Alma, the soul, and the whole thing. And I brought in glass pieces and wood pieces. And one of the best things about uh, Tim Tate's place is that they got everything, any tool. I had my nails done while I was there. It was a hard thing. She made me do it. He, he's so good, girl. And I had an angle changed. grinder to help. <laughs> no, those were my toes. That's okay. a better deal. Anyway. That would allow me to paint and to glue down and to fuse things and to come back and use chips and that didn't work on one thing and they'd come back to the other. He was also very eager in the best possible way, meaning, yeah, let's try that to insinuate or insert, insert my beadwork into his pieces because, in my opinion, your work is very singular. And then I would say, what do you think? And he grabbed it from me, sometimes hurting me. And then oh, he would put it God. in his work. Go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> the butterfly is also not just the tattoo that George Floyd had, but it's also mariposa in Puerto Rican is a term for baggage. So, right. Yeah, also marigón, that's the, the same mm -hmm. thing. Also, there are the names of people in this who like George Floyd, who were uh, assaulted and who died because of their ethnicity. In the top middle, there are now 23 variations of sexual identity, and I know 14 of them. Still trying to find the rest. More? Oh, we want to go? Uh, they're very... Yes, ma'am? I wish I could, girl. But I can't. I can't. Unfortunately, there it is. At yeah. uh, the bottom, you see gun with five <laughs> targets. Pulse night, uh, not Pulse, but uh, Club Q in Colorado. Gun with a minute and killed five people right off the bat. Um, at the time, the middle tall one, uh, it, was, it was right after there was an Asian woman heading to get her acupuncture in New York City. In front of a store, and a random person filled with hatred came and just beat her down. And it was very upsetting, so that's what that means. Next, this is my mixing painting and etching with my beadwork. I don't always know what they mean, except I do a lot of these drawings of where every part. I did a work a long time ago after looking in, standing in the checkout line, and somebody had opened up a book of nude people and whatever. It was a black nudity, and there was a woman who was so gorgeous. She was. Ethiopian and Haitian, I think. So gorgeous. And I read, and what do you want to do? And she's like, I don't want to have children. She didn't say, I want to take all of this money and open my own business or any of that. I was very upset about it. And I started thinking about voyeurism. So in a culture where everything on your body can touch and feel, so the eyes, the ears, the fingers, the genitals, your toes, everything has wants to grasp and feel, even when they, the people that, or whatever you're grabbing, does not want your touch. So that's what a lot of these pieces are. I felt like it was a woman being reduced to body parts. In other words, by that's another you know, a man looking at her, reducing her just to a body part. Anybody looking at her. Man, Anybody. Man, woman, true. someone, an employer, you name it. Ready? Okay, what do we got here? This is mostly yours, sir. Go for it. Oh, this man is standing on his head because he's so happy he owns all those women's vaginas, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so 
there was a lot of things about abortion going on during this time. So I'm just putting that out. I also went directly to therapy afterwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we can move on because you can you can actually oh well, the top piece to your right. That's wire work. So I would do a lot of like shaping wire, and then we would fuse the wire to the piece, and I could come back and use grit or tiny sand like grit and play with it, and then they would fire it again. And the center tile, for those of you who watch Pose, if you happen to see that Netflix special, there's an island right off of New York City, right off of Manhattan. And when you were HIV positive in the 80s and 90s, your body, your frequently your family did not claim your body at all because they wanted as much distance from you as possible. And those are unclaimed bodies are all in a mound on this island right off the coast of New York City. Huge. I shouldn't say a mound. It's like a small hill. So it's there. You mean they're buried there? They're buried there. I'm sorry. And it's mass grave. So. That's Potter's Field. That's New York's Potter's Field. People who die in jail and have no family that or people who are found this yeah. one's specific, not Potter. This is the one that's no, only it's for all Potter's Field. That's all I'm saying. I thought it was another name, but okay. this is just the HIV. But maybe the, a Potter's Field is true anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, here you go. I, I just think it's over and over the same thing about Tim does a lot of casting in contrast to my maybe casting one thing and then doing a lot of stuff around it, or my attempting to cast a lot breaking it up in the kiln, and then having to use one piece of it. Yes, we have different styles, but it worked beautifully. The wall doesn't look like one of my regular walls. It doesn't look like something she's done well normally, so it kind of is that melding yeah. of the two of us. Yeah. Uh, Ukraine was very prominent when we were there, yeah. so Ukraine was happening at that time, so there's a lot of things doing with Ukraine. It is in a box in the back of Goya Gallery. My but gallery. It'll be on display mid January to mid February. Thank you. We'll keep Goya. the question for the Q and A at the end. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. No, I, no problem. Thank you. Oops. Oh, this is just uh, viruses in general from 541 A.D. Justinian plague all the way up to present, and how they morph and change as they go through. Whether it's the AIDS virus or anything. More of the same. I do a lot of skeletons in my work. I was raised in a Pentecostal apostolic church. <laughs> I didn't believe that death was the end. It's just the transition or one door opening to a next reality. So when I went to graduate school in Mexico, Day of the Dead, all of that. Skeleton also is like a guardian of the gate of Sentinel, and death is just walking into a next place. So death is, or let's say skeletons are in my work as a relevatory or an evolutionary image. The arrows point to that woman where there are a lot of indigenous women and trans women around the country that just disappear forever, uh, murdered. So we were giving homage to that. And I just heard the best uh, word, indigiqueer. I swear to God. That's a good That's word. a real word. Indigiqueer. That's a whole new movement of indigenous. Well, it sounds so. also like their hip-hop name. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yo, I'm no. an indigenous. Indigiqueer. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Okay. Go ahead, girl. Well, I, I I don't have anything so great or new to say. I think we can just let them keep okay. looking and hold those uh, questions to the end. Of yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> well, because he's so nice. You read Hell's Six Page Storm? <laughs> it's the end of the. But I, I wouldn't listen to that. Did you ask one more question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your turn now, Joyce. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so now he's going to do my show for me. I always okay. do your bidding for <laughs> Well, We took five images from my catalog, which you're going to buy today because they're running out of them. Um, Mobilia Gallery, who I've been with for 40 years, is my basically jewelry gallery in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I called him and said, well, we've been together for so long. You ever thought about doing a catalog? He said, like 20 years. They said it's been 40 years. <laughs> and they said, um, why don't we just do a whole show? So this is one of the necklaces that came out of that show. It's multi-layered. It has imagery in it, just abstract and images in it. And this is one of those things that I'd never done before. OK, this is a large bird bath. It's called rechristening. 
and it's about the MAGA group. So there's a person who's being rechristened into that MAGA portion of, um, of Republicanism. There's a picture of uh, Trump on the back of the head. Uh, this is all deeds and their names of people from the Republican Party. Pence's name is at the end, and there's a noose at the end of his name because remember on the 6th they were oh, going to hang. hang him and the it's like um a january the 6th is written out in numbers and they're dice that are covered with dates like the first time he was what's it called that happened to trump the first time he was when they indicted that no what is it and oh, first time he's impeached and i have the second time that he was impeached oh. this was a long time ago so we're not now and uh, <laughs> when he was a rat when he was elected and that kind of thing. Whether you like or dislike him, whether you're Republican or Democrat, independent, that's not what this is about. It's my talking about what happened historically at that time and how I'm watching the culture in which I live change. I'm pressing it, Dad. Ah. This is a large textual, a really large piece, and I just enjoy doing it. I don't always have big reasons for what I do. Sometimes I just luxuriate in beauty and I allow the bead to just be sumptuous and that it could cover this whole lady. This is now at the University of Iowa, I think. And the gorgeous mom, my God. She's my model from, uh, I'm, I'm having a retrospective, a 50 year retrospective at the Baltimore Museum of Art that opens in March, oh, it's for two old. Oh. And they took some pictures, and I said, well, she's, she's my model. No, we're going to blah, blah, blah. They looked at the pictures they took. Is this the model's phone number? <laughs> she has promised VIP tickets to every one of you. That's here. exactly what I said. To lie and do, just come to his house and pick them up. Why don't we do that one? Just go to his house. I don't, and you know why? I'll give them to her. Yeah, come on. This must be your, your son must have. Oh, I got it. Okay. Also, I do wall hangs. And this one is about the size that you see now. I like to tell stories. Once again, it's like, and I make beaded pieces much larger than this. I'm working on a bead piece now that's going to be at least six feet tall. I did another one for a show I did in New Jersey that was like nine feet long and really. Anyway, I just like the idea that you don't have to wear it, that it could be a story that's on your wall and made with this beadworking technique. That is millennia, glasses millennia, not just like, you know, a couple of thousand years old. It's a very, very old thing. When you look into gate, into graves, you'll see maybe some kind of container made out of glass and a necklace made out of beads. It's done, though. Okay. So I said for this exhibition, you've got to find that green teapot. And like, why? What? We don't, because I have other teapots in my head. They didn't remember it when they got it. They said, that's some teapot. <laughs> it is the idea that it's a functional piece that is now functional so you can think about tea or why would you put that on a teapot or whatever. And just my prowess as a beater. I do not have false modesty if you haven't figured that out already. Shut up, Tim. <laughs> if I, why was I given this ability? Am I to be mediocre or second tier? You should cut Ever. me, but I'm not going to. I believe that I'm meant to exploit my talents, to share it, and to make something that you will walk past a Klimt and a Picasso just to get to my work. <laughs> it's been reported, <laughs> It's been reported. That might be my last. I don't know. Yes, indeed. So these... We're supposed to go back to the very first slide. She said she was going to Katie where you drink. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, I mean first, he has a oh, thing. Oh, you, okay. there's someone else up here. I just thought I mentioned. But the, the... Oh, Kim? Yes? Can we go back to the first slide? No, you cannot. I'm joking. They went to blackness. That's why I got you. Right. But your exhibition is traveling, right? Yeah. So is it on you right now? The, the exhibition messages is traveling and it goes it just left the Fuller. It goes to uh, California next, then Flint, then Virginia. That's the jewelry. What about the retrospective? The retrospective opens on the 24th of March. 
the BMA, and it is partnering with the SAM, the Seattle Art Museum. So it goes there, I think, in October. And thank you. If you try to go on opening night in Baltimore, this woman is so revered in Baltimore, you will not get within a mile of that museum. You're going to come in. You're going to have a great time. Ken will be hanging around. With I'm going to get there at 11. I'll be doing this. Wait, yeah. Wait. <laughs> go away. Please. Well, Thank you project, so much. You, you have also projects. Yeah, Jen, I show you. Yeah, yeah, show you. Right. So I'm putting a show together called Imagining Utopia. The reason I'm doing that, I want to, I want to predict what the United States would be if it was a queer accepting nation. In other words, if there was no problem for trans people, J Jane Mason will not be in this country. But everyone else of you who want to be, feel free. And so what would this country be like if it was accepting of all queer people? Would it be accepting of all people at that time? I mean, queer people tend to go across the whole line. So I'm going to do a prediction of what that's going to look like, just for the fun of it, right? And since it's my prediction, I can make it any prediction I want. You will instance, not be denied. I will not be denied. Pete Buttigieg is going to win the presidency in 2032. I'm just saying. In my country, he will be doing that. Why not? Here's another one. This woman, Marie Nivek Raja Salima Turner, is in the Oklahoma State Legislature and non-binary in the Somalian America. My God, what her journey to get to that must have been like. Especially Oklahoma. Especially Oklahoma. So I am predicting that they will be the first person appointed as the director of the Justice Department in 2036. Yay. There we go. In the first nine very Somalian uh, not my Somalian person is going to be that's, that's that'll be their first. Okay. Uh, in this one, I'm, this is part of what's going to be for the future. This is an older piece, but we all know these endless mirrors are a trick, right? You know, there, there are two mirrors facing together, light and side. So you just see this four foot tunnel on the wall. You know it's not real, but you can't help but see that tunnel. For me, since it can be anything, since it doesn't exist anywhere but in the viewer's head, for me, HIV is gone. These people are all alive in me. HIV doesn't exist in my new world because it's a queer acceptance, so no one has to hide their sex and go to all the things that when they were repressed had to go do. Now they're just regular citizens, so they're going to go forth and multiply. And they're all the ones that passed before are alive again. I did this just to annoy you with the choice, but... So I just wanted. To, so I have a lot of work in these bell jars. You may know some of them, but I thought I would I would load thirty of them into a database of artificial intelligence, and then give give artificial intelligence a chance to see what it'd be like. And these two are actually from artificial intelligence, just to really scare you what the future is like. Uh, those look like two of my pieces, but they're not. They're just AI. But it's an interesting way of doing that. I I think we have enough artificial intelligence right now. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I am with you. All right. All right. Next, uh, first, this is uh, Irwin and me holding hands. Wherever Irwin, thank you, Irwin. Yes, this is this is showing that both of us have our wedding bands on. That is not my husband, but he was gracious enough. His wife was really happy about that. Both of us right along, and because uh, the marriage equality was codified last year, and yeah. maybe that's something that happens. Everyone can marry whoever they want. Maybe there won't be uh, indoctrination programs for kids or, or places to cleanse them. But maybe there's all kinds of ways. Maybe we have equal housing. Those are all the things I'll be predicting in this show. Uh, Jamie Ann, is the, she's helping out as the uh, registrar of the show. And we have a, a curator coming in from England. As you can tell, Joyce and I like to tell stories a lot. So that's what binded us, I think, as we went through. I think also just the, an immediate like for each other. That's true. We've known each other a long time, so it's nice. May I would like to say something about your series also, and that is we are living with people who are gay already. There are doctors and our politicians and our friends who just don't know it. And in squelching people, we don't know who could have come up with a cure for cancer and all these other things because of the way we do that. I mean, this is something that people of color have yelled about all the time about not having your total esteem, your total person realized. What if we could live where you could just be who you are and use your talents without fear? 
that's that's a dream to behold. And so that is what I gleaned from when I we talked it. about that. Well, that's hopefully what when you finish the show after we figure out where it's going, that uh, we'll we'll see if that is the narrative that people take home from. And the photograph of me shaking your hand. I thought you wanted my foot. No, no, no. no, no that's Just, another night. That's okay. another party, darling. We've been there. Okay, so. Yes, we, we have one more slide. One we do have one more slide? That's, remember the first slide. Oh, I have well, so. we have questions. Right, there we go. There we go. All right, so we are finishing on this wonderful wall, and now you can ask as many questions as you want. But please wait for, um, we will bring the, the mic to, um, to you for to ask the questions so that the people on Zoom can hear uh, as well your questions. Just and then someone. Katie will be also uh, asking questions from Zoom if they are so. Flag Katie down. I got you, Gary. I'll make sure. Okay, because Joyce is a performance artist, I want you to um, do your imitation of when you went to Murano and it wasn't <laughs> Tim, it was the Italians. And you said, we're going to do this. And they're like, no, no way, madame. We can do this. No, but it's an Italian. And then you tell them what for. Okay, okay. go for it, Joyce. So I go to the Ringo studio. I'm dressing so. Where do I this beautiful dress? And what I do is I walk to the studio. They don't know me from anyone. And I start, I can do what the Italians like. I don't know if I can do it because I'm warmed up. I start with opera. Like, what the hell was that? Right. And so I go in and I introduce myself. But this is part of life. In my, yeah. Okay. So when we would work with each other. And they would say, it's not going to work. Of course it is. And they were right. The things that didn't work, it was a balance, things that were right. And then, you know, like, you know, I'm from Baltimore. You cannot tell me what is not going to work. I almost tried the 400-year thing on them, oh. but that one doesn't work in Italy. Do you even know what the four? Who the hell am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of slavery, that one didn't work. So, um. I went back another time and they worked with me. And what I learned that didn't work, I came back to the United States. I got old Italian beads that were the same combat compatible recipe as the glass because they never changed it. And this time we fused and did things and they were like, right? Uh. And I asked, so how do you feel about a woman? Working in a traditional studio. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> now, we work in the same studio, Marana, which is also Ivory Way, Way Studio. Right? Yes. But they didn't like the career there that much. Either. I have to tell you, they were about as happy to see me as they were anybody else. So they thought everything I was doing was wrong, but they were wrong. So. Well, I did, I got, what I got also was a difference in what's considered politeness. And so there's one really large piece of mine, which is a woman holding her child, birthing her own child, but grabbing it like this. And the guy who did it for me, you know you know him, but I can't, maybe his name is Sergio, the ex-boxer, yeah. right? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I like to sing with the ladies that join and things coming out of it. And he was the one who told me, but I don't like women. This is after flirting with me all the time. And the other guys would be very... Or vice versa. Nah. No, I'm the boss then. Oh. <laughs> so, But the other guys were just like, they couldn't figure out why this would work. And I brought an African uh, sculpture with me, and it said, no, more. You know, it's not an angel. And, and they would work with me, and then some of them got ridiculous. Also, if it wasn't perfect, like if they didn't feel the feet were right, they were about to throw it away. It's like, no, I take everything. You have to kneel it. And some of the things that didn't work right side up, I did upside down. And when they got to see it, uh, when I sent a catalog or something or images, then it was like, God. But she is revered there. Well, thank you, my love. Now she's in, in the 21st century, to have to still what we're talking about in regard to gender or whatever makes me know that they're still very much aligned with their traditional way of working. And Berenda keeps bringing people, Fred Wilson, everybody doing stuff. 
uh, but to do bead work and fuse it with that, that was something that they really were not prepared for and also amazed when it happened. Here's what I'm trying to say. Well, what do they look at? And that's the difference between American glass workers and <laughs> other glass workers where I've seen. I go into the studio, I say, let's do this. They openly say, that's stupid, let's do it. <laughs> they don't, they are adventurous and not locked in the same tradition that doesn't allow them to be as adventurous as they could be. When we discovered that some of the things that she wanted to do were possible, it was like the best day in the studio because we knew when she came in, it was going to be good. So, and I don't know if you have been around her, but you can probably guess that six hours together, you're tired. But <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> However, on the good days, it was like it was like heaven. So, so what do you have to add? Is six hours the two of us together, oh. which is twelve hours, oh. <laughs> which is straight to the emergency. Oh. Next, next question. Yes. Really know Rebecca about. and uh, Gary I'll both have a question. My question has been covered. Oh, oh well, there you go. You've answered it. Thank you. Always ahead of the curve. Oh, there, Rebecca, well, I, I've, I've, I'll repeat it just because uh, I was going to ask it. I was going to ask you each a separate question. And I, Tim, I wanted you to say a little bit about your pieces in motion because so many of your pieces, particularly under glass, are in motion. As I believe the pieces you for the exhibition here. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like you to talk about that. And uh, I was going to say before just a moment ago that we've enjoyed hearing both of you talk and enjoyed hearing you talk, um, Joyce, uh, but when are you going to sing? But you've already started. 2030. He just did a music video, by the way. Right. Yeah, well, we're working on a music our... video, too. Uh, for the S oh, go ahead. No, no, it's about your... You know, video inside of Dell's. When, when I was a kid, my uncle was a ham radio operator, and my aunt had little miniature TVs, which I'm sure didn't work a bit, but I was fascinated by this little TV. So I kept it after she passed, and it struck me one day to put it inside of one of the domes. Now, this thing didn't have a chance of working. So I had to go and just, at that time, they didn't have video picture frames. They only, you couldn't get small frames like that, except for like on, on screens of phones. So I, had to go to China and have had made up the original one made up. Then I had it made in Hagerstown, Maryland. It took forever. There were ten thousand dollar boxes of parts from China. And, oh my God, it was so expensive and horrible. Anyway, the reason I switched to it is I just wanted to see. I was telling stories, and a, and a picture tells a thousand words. And so the intellectual property of all my domes prior to this were based on the objects that I cast inside of them, the words that I would write on the surface. So the intellectual property was complete for me. When I started using videos, and I, most of the videos were my own videos. I went to Edison, I just made a ton of videos. The intellectual property left the glass and goes directly to the video. So the glass now enhances the major intellectual property of the piece. But I found that so amazing to me. So I started doing, I, I've done, I don't know, 100 of them of the video dome pieces. I'm starting to do a bunch more again. Because I love it. Thank you for asking me. I think also for the people who are con who are not adventurous or conservative, right in America with glass, to walk into a space and see a piece a piece of motion like that on the wall and know that it's not some Disney company or you know or MIT, but it is an artist extending their knowledge. I I think that's a big deal. You know, the first year I showed them was with Maureen Littleton. I so for Chicago, and the door, this is before 2007, which means it was before the crash. So yes. they would open the door to the sofa, and a thousand people would run, they'd dunk under, run in to go put dibs on all the pieces they wanted. So it was it was Michael Janice's first show, and they were all running to, to see Michael Janice, and all of a sudden they saw video screens, and oh, it turned over. I thought, poor Michael. They kept seeing people veer to see the video screen. So in the sense of people notice motion and video, it was an interesting way of re-looking at the art I was making. My question, um, and then I just have a comment sort of like that, but where is this piece now? Where is it going to be, this rather large piece? This, yeah. this one. 
It says it's going to be a Goya gallery from mid January to mid February. Okay. Prior to the retrospective. So right now it's in the back room in a box, but it'll be taken out and installed by mid January uh, in Baltimore. And so they're all individual pieces that you kind of just put together as a yeah. puzzle, huh? And as a puzzle, they go it's six pieces that are three foot by three foot. Each one of those is one foot by one foot or two foot or one by two, whatever, different size. And so we plugged them into this grid to tell this gigantic tale. Yeah. That exists on that and my comment just follows up from you. I have a piece of yours, Tim, where the video is of the person looking at the piece. Oh, yeah. So I have it in a place in the living room where it's kind of around a corner and people are kind of looking around and all of a sudden they see something's moving and then they realize, oh my God, that's me, that's me. It's taking a picture of me. There's like a Geiger counter also. So like I decided that one needed to stay in Washington, D.C. But it's fascinating to watch people react when they actually see themselves in the video that's actually going on. So it's I really fun. I always put a sound wave in those. And the problem with a sound wave is if you're a museum guard or a gallery employee, if you want to kill me in about three days. Ah. So they unplugged my work so I could not. Then I had to put it so you had to hold a button down to hear the sound. Yeah. Then, then they was purposeful. And like that's put it back. Well, it's fascinating to watch the reaction of people to see oh. themselves because they don't expect anything. They're looking at still life or still sure. works. And all of a sudden, this one has movement and they want to look at the movement and they, oh, this is me. It's Thank you. Well, the report uh, 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 on Zoom, Zoom for the yeah. Zoom folks. Yeah. Yeah. I need to join the Joyce Talk. Beats. Are the beats, Joyce, something that you actually make? Are these glass beats that are produced by you? Or are they beats that are acquired and then assembled? Mixed. Mixed. For the question, because I'm going to say it again because they're also filming this. Mm -hmm. She asked if the beads were made for me uh, specifically or were they inquired? Did I acquire them? Okay. I used to make beads, okay. lamp work. That's a hilarious thing to watch. I also have bought many, many beads in my life. It, when I was very young, it's wherever I went, I go straight to where I was going to buy beads. People give me beads. And sometimes if I'm working on a project and I need to have a bead of a certain length or color, then I might ask someone to do it. My joy, though, is to use beads that are new or very, very old and not bend them to my will. That's what I always say to make people laugh, but to become with them, come one with them. It's a very mesmerizing experience to do beads like that and to submit to the technique. I do have a slight anecdote to tell. I'm from South Africa, and in South Africa, a lot of the African craftsmen very cleverly beat, ah. but with wire. And then they create creatures that are beaded. And that have you ever heard of the monkey biz? I I went maybe seven years ago to South Africa. I received an award, and I thought I'm going first class. Of course, mm. I couldn't. So I took two assistants with me, and uh, uh, three friends said, "You're not going without us." All artists, and we bum rushed South Africa from Cape Town all the way up. To Joe Berg, and we literally uh, taught on what we do on tables. We taught wherever we went, in Durban. We mm -hmm. taught beadwork. One of the people was a dancer of African dance from the West Coast, so she sure. did that. We'd be in townships uh, in somebody's garage. They clear it out, and we taught what we do all the way up to down. Yeah, and so I, I of course know the Indebele and the, the Zulu work and worked with artists very different than what I do technique. Right. Um, I went there to work at Monkey Biz in uh, Cape Town because I kept seeing figures that were very very simple, but uh, I can make very realistic figures and beads. And so I went to teach someone at this place so that they would be able to develop it and have the option of working with beads without having to have a an armature because one of the glories of beadwork is that it can be translucent mm -hmm. soon as you put stuff inside of it to support it then you miss that and it was hard work because they were very traditional but i think one or two got it 
there is a woman at Engle uh, Eastern Market on the weekends from South Africa who actually brings those small little monkey creatures and stuff mm -hmm. over from South Africa. I had bought a bunch of them to give to Joyce as a gift, but now we spoiled it, so I don't have to give them to you now. So that's pretty also, good. Also, let me say the pieces on wire when you're talking about monkeys and elephants and stuff, there is uh, been problematic because they've been copied by Chinese artists and then they bring them in, they sell them for less, and they knock oh the indigenous God. people out of their own uh, art form and business. I don't know if you know Liza Lou's work. Yeah. But Liza Lou has had whole villages of women that she hires the entire village and she makes one mile chains of beaded, I mean, amazing pieces of their corning and variety of other things. You know her work. In fact, the Renwick had her kitchen. Yeah. And that's her old work. Yeah. I was in. Joe Berg, she was having an exhibition. I went to the gallery and I just was like, okay, stop. This is going to change everything. They look like paintings, but they were beads and they depended upon tone and light and the way a painter would. It was just really beautifully done. And she's been yelled at. And the, all of these things talk about the creation of work to me and craftsmanship because she doesn't do everything herself. But if you wish to create a lot, I, I do almost everything myself unless I have a project or an installation I have to do. That's because I, I don't have, you know, I have my studio and I just like to work and I don't care if I don't make 97,000 things a year. Although I do make Yeah, things. she works all night long. But, I don't know how she does. But my point is, there's been yelling about people believing that she is taking advantage of African women because they are doing the work for her and not getting necessarily their name on it. I ask people to look at it many different ways. It's probably paying them more than they would receive in South Africa for other work. Those who don't know how to do it are learning. And then she's not in South Africa now. She lives here. She left them with the ability and the commercial knowledge to apply. So I think there's there are sign-offs. You know, you give something. And she did, she did say that she pays them quite well, especially for South Africa. So, Tim, I have a question going back to the first slide. Uh, the two men that were in Edison's studio dancing, were they just like studio assistants? Was it just a like there, a random there, thing? Not there were, that, it was a random thing. There were right. two men who worked in the studio. Right. So Edison. they weren't like as if they were gay at the time. It just random. So it represented gay men it, dancing. Definitely had no relation to gay. There was no such thing as the queer man back there, and were very few. But they certainly weren't. They certainly weren't grandizing, unless it was in a therapy. So those two men dancing were really there seriously to find out if movement would do it. If you look at their faces, there's no smiles. It's not a funny thing to them, and they're dressed in very contemporary clothes even today. And it's now, you know, who knows how that was thought over the last hundred years? Was it funny? Was it disgusting? Was it weird? Sully everything. Everything over this hundred years. Now they're kind of nostalgic. It's so sweet now, right? It's this sweet thing of these two men dancing for three minutes a century ago. Here we are still looking at that iconic movement of that. So it it was the most perfect video I could pull from the archives. I mean it was as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what I was looking at. So if you are an artist here and you want to try the archives at Library Congress, they're spectacular. And they are they try desperately to help you with whatever you want. Any other questions or civil comments? I think you have one back here. No, I'm wrong. My eyes are wrong. Uh, oh, yes, there is one. Yes. Absolutely. I went to her house in Mexico City. I thought, how can a person actually be that small? And if you were to come to my house, my kitchen has a circus poster, a giant that you would have on the street, on my walls, and there's beadwork and everything all around. It's living with the joy of what I do. And so, you know, I thought that that must have been a cousin of mine by another generation of something else. Something. Yeah. Is there more questions or maybe from Zoom? Oh, yeah, there is one in the front here. Bring the mic. That's why we forgot about the Zoom. Yes. 
<laughs> Would you talk about those teapots? Did you cover existing teapots? So uh, there was a uh, uh, people who were collecting teapots to open a teapot museum, and they asked me to via Mobilia to make a couple of teapots. So I probably made three, and I was just. Once I started, I couldn't figure out any reason to stop. <laughs> and I wanted them to have the, the persona and the prowess and the individuality of any of the other pieces that I made. So the fact that they were teapots, the, the idea also was a, a container that you couldn't get into. That's part of it. But the teapot was basically because I was being paid to make a teapot. And when they said, and go for it, Jeff. What do you to do? What, what, what could a person do? I'm in the same teapot museum, so I did virtual teapots, which is the video of the tea pouring. Ah. At the top was each different type of teapot and coffee pot you could have. And so he did a whole series of them. Uh, did down. he open that or never did? Yeah, he's yeah. still looking for something to open it for yeah. him. And they're looking at him for $5 million to make That's it happen. It. So somewhere between it. the two, it'll happen. Sunny Cannon. Thank you. I do remember. Do we have any more questions? Zoom questions? Zoom questions, yes. We yes. have a question from Zoom. Oh. Uh, someone would actually like to know how you two first met each other. Reform school. <laughs> yeah. You see how they laugh like they believe it? I don't want to say the sad <laughs> part. That's like, I think I asked them that truth there. We met, remember. The, we met uh, with the James Renwick Alliance. Oh. Yeah. He was sitting at my table and she started singing. I said, who the hell is this crazy? What was it next yeah, to me? Yeah. This is many, many moons ago, 20 some years. Oh, it was a very long time ago. Yeah. I came to the studio, yeah. he took me around and showed me everything it was room after room of joy. Just stuff you could break, I just told you. <laughs> and then we you know, we would cross, but then this opportunity, we hadn't seen each other in a long time. And we had. And this opportunity uh, came up, and it came up because he said, so Joyce, do you want to do a thing? You'll come to the studio, you yeah. do a thing. And I said, what's up? What's behind this? Are you in trouble? Do you want oh. a letter from me? What's going? No. And I said, of course. And then the rest is hysterical history. <laughs> uh, well, it didn't hurt that she recognized me. Um, which one, who, were, um, who was the woman next to you? Olita, Leslie, someone? No, not Leslie, the other one. Lowry. Lowry, oh my God. Well, don't tell her I forgot her name. It didn't hurt that Lowry happened to recognize me in front of her gallerist with her sitting next to me. Trust me, the, the gods had cleared the clouds for that moment. So suddenly they saw me as possibly a serious contender. So that was that was. Well, nice. also, I am the worst with names, but I did definitely know Tim. He's yeah. not an easy person, I think. To forget the dopey smile and everything, and uh, I said, she meant to say we're both storytellers. I'm sure that's what you meant to say. Well, I said exactly what I meant to say, <laughs> and we're both storytellers. Uh, yes, <laughs> as we have seen tonight. Uh, <laughs> is there another question? Le, oh. le zoom, le zoom. <laughs> he is not from France. He just says that. Yes. Don't believe just him. Just <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Wait, oh. I'd like to do something. Yeah. All right. Thank Thank you down, so down. Down. All right. Okay. I want to say this because my mom taught me this, and it also includes a little ditty. My mother told me never to hide my talent myself under a bushel. That's an old Southern thing where people hid things under baskets so they wouldn't be taken away. So you, you don't hide your light under a bushel because it should glow and shine. They had to because they didn't have academic education because they were African Americans living in the, you know, the beginning of the last century in the South. They were sharecroppers. But when they took the trek to the North, it's really the upper South, got different jobs and, and, um, had a child who really liked school, they always said, don't do it. So I say to people that I have a bright light. You have one too. You maybe don't want to shine. I am going to shine because it's not just for me. 
is for all of those people whose wings I'm flying on right now, who died so I could be here right now. And if you cannot cop a hit off this light, if you can, because I'm looking at the cop a hit, is that the African American vernacular? <laughs> if you cannot grab some of my resonance, then step back. Because this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Ooh. Let it shine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody for coming so much. I appreciate all you coming. I do. Thank you. Thanks to all the Zoom people for tuning in. Yes, Zoomers. Yes, Zoomers. Thank you, Zoomers. I know it's terrible. I won't let you and know.